Welcome to Follow Up Boss Office Hours. We are going to be rocking out today on organizing your follow up boss through tags and custom fields. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm even more excited to be back with Jeremy Smith. How are you, man? I'm good, Lee. I'm, uh, it's been a crazy year so far. It's, yeah, it's early yet, but hopefully we're it's turning in the right direction. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Why don't you give a little bit of your background and what you do at Follow Up Boss? I think most people know, but I'd love to, you know, just tackle that real quick. Yeah, sure. So I've been a success manager at Follow Up Boss now for a little over three and a half years, working on year four. And um, I work with teams um, who need help keeping everything structured and strategic and and uh, getting the most value out of Follow Up Boss. Love it. That's great. That's a that's a, a lovely, concise way to uh to say that. Um, yeah, and if you if you have a, if you're a certain account level, you may have a dedicated success manager. Uh, if not, you have access to first come, first serve. You can always click on the question mark in your account at the bottom right, yep. and it'll drop up whatever option you have. If you have a dedicated, they'll be there. If you have a first available, hit the button. Um, pop it. There it goes. I yeah, know, I we um, they move the question mark. <laughs> I got confused. That's right, and um, it just to uh, compound on that, even if you aren't a, uh, even if you aren't lucky enough to uh, have a success manager assigned to your account, our support team um, can answer you know most of your questions. And if there are questions that they don't have the expertise to, they might be able to help you get a meeting with a success manager to maybe put some pieces together that in a you know in a in a way that makes more sense for what you need to do. Exactly. I'm actually dropping the support. I think I think everybody knows it. It's pretty easy to find, but um, dropping the link to email support at followupboss.com. That's always a great first step. In fact, people ask me a lot of times how I learned so much about follow boss. 80% of it was probably just hitting up support and being like, can we do this? Does it do this? How do I do this? <laughs> so it's a great, great resource. So but really excited to dig in today on this. I know a lot of people now the follow up boss has been around much longer. A lot of people have a bunch of people sitting in Lee or a bunch of old action plans or a bajillion tags or a bunch of custom fields they're not using or they've never tried custom fields. So really excited to dig into this. Jeremy, why don't you just tell us at a high level, like why would we want to use tags and custom fields to get our account organized? Right on. Well, having a, having a database um, is one thing, but keeping it organized is really the goal. An organized database keeps you structured efficient and on point for your next tasks a lot more easily. So in general, tags are meant to be subcategories and custom fields can also work as subcategories or they can store information in other ways that's filterable, searchable and, um, and easy to find so that you can get to the customers that you need to when you need to get to them. Yeah, exactly. And I, I'll give a couple of quick examples that are kind of top of mind. like. For example, for us, for our company, even we use the tag to power our email list, our email newsletter. So yep. we have it set up where we add a certain tag. They ought, now we use Mailchimp for ours, but you could do it through Follow Boss or any way you want, just to designate that because we don't want to email everybody in our database. We want to have people that have either opt in or been on a session or, or things like that. So using tags, you know, I had somebody else recently I worked with that that does events. And, you know, they wanted to send out a mailer as well as an email for an upcoming event. So they either tag them specific to that event and then use that tag mm -hmm. to, send the e to pull the mailing list or send the email. Or they keep an ongoing tag of like VIP, top 50, yep. and then boom, you have your list right there. You know, every event, you don't have to go through and be like, who am I going to invite to this one? So right. <laughs> just two simple examples, but. No, those are great. And um, speaking as a subcategory, one that I like to tell people is that, you know, follow boss is meant to use stages as kind of the primary category. This is your relationship with people that the stage is meant to reflect your relationship with these folks. One of the ways that, you know, um, past client is a really helpful stage to have in there so you can market and work off of those relationships that you work so hard to build. But not every past client is like a bankable investment, right? So almost all your past clients, you probably had a great time with, they probably had a, you know, a good working relationship with you and they might all be good resources, but there's definitely those folks that you hit it off with more, those folks who are raving fans, 
make a VIP list, make them a priority when it comes around to the once a quarter time where you're going to reach out and see, do they have anybody who's in the market? You know, how, how can you leverage those folks to grow your business? Tags is going to help you specify those past clients. And one thing that I want to touch on really quickly is that the reason we want you to use tags or custom fields in order to categorize is to keep your stage list as short as possible because the stage really is, again, this is a primary category. If you were filing these folks in a big filing cabinet, did you want to have, you know, just a few different, you know, um, dividers between your files or do you want to have a thousand dividers? Yeah, that's a really good, good metaphor for it. And I want to be clear for people too, right now we're going to kind of cover both at a high level, but we're going to dig specifically into tags and then custom fields more deeply. Um, but the cool thing is they can also interact. So one of the things about tags, they're easy to create, they're easy to remove, um, whether it's on purpose or not. Custom fields can be a little harder to remove. There's a some pros and cons kind of between um, you know, the two, but I want to, I want to, something that just came to me top of mind, I want to mention, we really encourage people because we want the stage to change all the time, right? We want our closed people to come back and mm -hmm. sell with us seven years later or two years right. later, whenever. So I have always recommended move them to past client or to close, whichever you prefer closed is baked in. You can't delete it. But tag them the year that they close and if they're a buyer and a seller, because this way you've got ever, to your point, Jeremy, you've got evergreen information. So even yep. if they become active again, or you think they're hot because they're going to transact again, the example I always use is like a homestead exemption. If they're tagged 2022 buyer, it's real easy to hit that button. If you deal with non-owner occupants, maybe you want a custom field or a tag for that as well, but hit a button send the homestead exemption stuff to all your buyers from last year and move on. So, you know, things like that, uh, again, think of tags as evergreen things. You know, I'm, I'm big into cleaning up tags, but I'm also fine with having a bunch. Keep our stages simple, keep our custom fields simple, unless we have defined reasons, but there's no problem having a bunch of tags. One last right. pro tip on tags that I recently learned, which is maybe embarrassing to admit, <laughs> they show up in alphabetical order here on the left-hand side. So if that's you true. Want, you know, and numbers being first. So if you want right. to create tags that are going to be more visible, you can also use a hashtag or an exclamation point if you get weird like me. But like, if you think things you want to be more visible, if you have a bunch of tags, consider using, yeah, a number or a character uh, or at least being alphabetically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that asterisk put it ahead of the numbers and usually computers will put the numbers first of any letters. So the asterisk is punctuation, computer puts it first. Yeah, exactly. So just some, some pro tips there on tags. And then again, we're going to get into both separately, but the interaction between the two mm -hmm. can be really powerful as well. Show me all my people tag this that are owner occupants or that meet certain criteria that you might have as a custom field. Yeah, we've got a bunch in here. So, yeah, I mean, if we would just had- so Show know, me past clients that have a birthday coming up in the next yeah, five days, exactly, you know? Exactly that, right. So if you're looking for the stage past client, you look at your VIPs, you look at their birthdays. So three different filters, it's gonna get you that nice concise list of folks that you might wanna reach out to in a special way, as opposed to just an email or a shout out on social media. So right. there's all sorts of ways to use that data together to filter your lists. And you can also, this is, I'm showing you, you can filter on the fly, but you can always save your filters as a list if you're gonna use it over and over again, so. Yeah, yeah exactly. they can definitely play off of each other. Um, and when we talk a little bit more about automations, we'll see how they inter intertwine as well. Exactly. So uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Let's let's dig into tags first. And I think it makes more, I was thinking we cover more high level first, but let's dig mm -hmm. into tags and custom fields. And then after we've done both, we can talk a little more about interactions that might make sense, you know? Yeah, sure. All right. So um, we talked a little bit about finding a group of people with a tag as a secondary care, as a secondary classification. Another great reason for using tags is to capture an important piece of information that you want to find quickly. 
And so for instance, if, um, if customers interested in a waterfront home, you know, tagging them as waterfront is a great way of finding folks quickly as if you come across some waterfront listings, you want to get people that information really quick. You just search for waterfront or water view or lakeside or whatever you want to, whatever, however you want to classify it. And then once you have that list sorted, you can send everybody on that list a batch email really quickly with those listings included. Um, no need to go in and send, you know, a bunch of specific, you know, search emails from your MLS when you can just add the, add the listings to a batch email and follow up loss. And that's a really, you know, great way of, of narrowing it down. Um, and then, you know, the other using the, the tags to, <clears throat> you can also put tags in your columns. The only problem with that is that it shows all your tags at the same time. You can right. use this to filter further by using the filter in the column header, but the filter box over here gives you a little bit more direct control over what you want to see in the list. Yeah, and one more thing that's not super intuitive, I also learned this somewhat recently, you can add a second filter of tags. So if you need to include some that and exclude is true. others, do Absolutely. a separate filter though, because yep. you can't include and exclude in the same one. Exactly, and you can do this actually with most filters. Um, in follow-up loss, in fact, like you could probably try it with all the filters to really come up with a segment as opposed to everything above this or below this. You can really find that middle ground that really suits what you're looking for in this particular case. Yeah, and you and can do this with. Go ahead. No, exactly. And to Jeremy's point before, if you if you're doing this criteria for something you do consistently, you can easily hit either update list if you're in a existing smart list or hit the plus to make a smart list. So if you're like, these are my newsletter people, or these are my event invite people, or these are my high value people, people waterfront is another great example, like you said, um, easy to save these if you're gonna use it consistently. And of course, if you have a team, you can share them with the team. They're only gonna see their leads that fall into that criteria. So really, you know, just to, so much you can do here. I mean, I did this this morning with something else where I'm like, ooh, I want to hit all these people, but not if they have this tag. And I just did it real quick, didn't need to save it. And right. Sent a bunch of emails and moved on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tags, um, a couple of the cons with tags that I think we should mention that tags are meant to be very versatile. They're designed to be like your Swiss army knife. You can do almost anything with them. But if you're working in a team environment, you also have to consider that Tags can be added in error. If people start searching for a tag, you know, I've seen this happen before where you start typing closed, you, you know, maybe you misspell it and you're going fast and you can't find it and you create a new tag by mistake. Hopefully your misspelling isn't quite this bad. But basically I see that a bunch of times where a tag can repeat. And that's part of the tag management part that I think Lee, that Lee mentioned where that's kind of a necessary kind of once in a while, I'm gonna clean up these tags that are duplicate or redundant. But there's no reason you can't have lots of tags. But if you can keep the redundancies low, I'll show you the tag screen in a couple of seconds. But, but basically, um, and the other thing is that they can be deleted. Tags can be deleted. We're going to talk about how to store information that might that would possibly be a great tag in a more secure way when we talk about custom fields. The tags can also be deleted pretty easily. Yeah, for sure. And that's that very much something to be aware of. And I, I, I preach that a lot as well. Like if you hit the plus and it's a little, it's not exactly what Alan's comment was, but it, it's better to look for an existing tag first than to just start typing. Because you, if you add a hyphen or leave off a hyphen, right. so that's the point. Now you have four, we'll use the, the bad number tag as an example, because I see that a lot. People have got yeah. bad underscore number, which is, you know, from Wilopo. And, but that's the one you need to use. So people have bad phone, people have bad phone right. number, they have bad space phone. They're not case sensitive, yep. but all the characters matter. Right, right. Yeah, the searching, the, the search tool is great, but as soon as you get some sort of results, if you scroll through those first, it works a little bit better. And I saw the question from Alan. Yeah, the, the, the mobile uh, tag search is not quite as smooth as the browser. Um, we're always making improvements and, and we are actually releasing a couple of improvements to our apps coming up soon that should improve overall performance. So hopefully that'll get faster and smoother. Good. And for Alan too, I know you guys have brought on some, some Android specialists somewhat recently as well. So I think Android mm -hmm. is uh, definitely evolving more quickly than it has in the past. So 
Yeah, cool. Well, Jimmy, so let's too. go to, I always forget to share this with people. Now it's intuitive to me, but I, same thing. I didn't learn it for a while. If you click, if you hit back real quick, if you click on the tag itself, don't hit the X because that'll remove it. It takes you to everybody with that tag. And similar to what Jeremy just did, when you mouse over it, as long as you have removed it, it also shows you if it's a recent last year or two tag, it also shows you when it was applied and how. Was it applied by right. an action plan? Was it applied by Zapier? Was it manually applied by somebody? Really good intel here. Um, just to be able to see like who added this and when and you know what's the what's the function of this. Right, and this will work for when, uh, if, if the lead source is providing tags as well, it'll tell you if the tag is original from the lead source or if it was added later on by a person. There's a way to differentiate between those if you mouse over. But yeah, I love the sort, um, you know, if you're, you know, if, if you have a, an inkling about one person, you can be like, oh yeah, I tagged everybody. Click on it and get the list really fast from that right. one person. I found myself doing that a lot, actually, because yeah, one person's top of mind, they're tagged right. something like, needs follow up or do this thing. And I'm like, oh, let me hit all my needs follow up people and and just do it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, do you want me to, maybe I should touch on the tag maintenance really quickly. Yeah, not I think too, so. Not I, had, I, just, okay. I just added the auto apply thing to our notes too. So let's go to the tag. Yeah. The actual all right, right. So in the So those of you who are admins, who have admin access to your accounts, you also have the ability to take a look at the tags in the system and do a little bit of maintenance. Um, there's one function, so admin and tags is how you get here. Um, and you can see this is all um, set up and this is also an alphabetical list. <clears throat> um, it's, and um, I've seen some teams with lots and lots and lots of tags. So this is a nice, like, pretty short list. One thing I definitely wanna to touch on is auto tagging. So this is a cool thing that we do for leads that don't come in with any specific tags or locations. Um, if it's, you know, if it, we have ways of, we, we can grab the zip code in the city out of the property address so that you can have that tag apply to the lead. We have advanced rules in the lead flow that do something similar, but that's for a different purpose. So but basically this would be a way of saying, okay, this person looked in, Glendale, California. And if the Glendale, California tag is on there, then you know that you'll find be able to look for other people who have Glendale in their um, in their list as well. So that tag will be persistent with everybody who looks in Glendale and you'll be able to find those folks a little bit faster. Same yeah, thing with zip codes. I was waiting for this part, Jeremy, because this is where the reverse prospecting magic happens. If you're having tags come in automatically with zip or city or both, it makes it a lot easier to say, hey, I just got a new listing in 30306. Let me go send it to everybody tagged 30306. Boom, there's your list. Hey, it's got a new listing. Let me know if you're interested in going to see it or I'm going to be about there tomorrow if you want to, you know, take a look. So just powerful stuff that's already baked into the system. Like you don't have to yep. actually do anything except for make sure it's turned on to be able to use this. Exactly. And if you're state and and this can be turned off and on right here. So if you turn it on, you can actually pick which one. If you don't want zip codes and cities, you know, just go for it. And you can also just shut it off and update and it'll make that change automatically. When you turn it off, it does not remove any of the tags that have been applied. There's no like automatic delete there. It just turns it off going forward. Um, and one quick note about lead, you know, like lead, uh, sorry, tag hygiene is what I call, I call this. So um, like I said, once a quarter, it makes sense that if you're, see, especially if you're seeing where there might be redundant or duplicate tags in the system, this is the best screen to kind of just get rid of them. So you can pull them up alphabetically. So for instance, if I wanted to find duplicate tags with the word import, I could just look up, you know, maybe I've just got too many different, and I'm I have a new keyboard that I'm trying to get used to, sorry. But um, now I've got everything with imported in here. So if I just wanted to keep import and I don't need any of these others, I can simply X through these and it removes the tag completely from the system. And while I'm talking about removing tags, you can also add tags as a mass action from the people screen, add tags and remove tags. So this is an easy way of, if you find people with specific tag, you're like, I don't think I need that tag anymore from these folks. We can remove it as a mass action. And it has its own button, which I've always considered an interesting design choice by the folks who put it here, but um, instead of just putting it under here, but I like it. And that's an easy way to find it and 
and, and again, try to keep that tag hygiene clean as much as you can. Absolutely. Yeah. Bulk up, bulk update there. And also back on the tag screen, um, you can, this is a new ER feature. One, like Jeremy said, if you click the X here, it makes the tag go away. It is gone. Right. It's no longer on all the people that had it. Obviously, you guys can probably tell the count of that tag is in parentheses. So if you see you have a bunch of tags that have one, maybe that's part of a queue to consolidate. If you, you don't, having one tag on one person probably won't do much for you unless it's really specific. But right. now it used to be that you had to add a new tag you wanted and then potentially remove the bad tag and then it would go oh. away. Now you're actually able to edit the tags as an admin with this yep. little, little pencil paper button. You right. can actually edit the name of it there and that will update across the board for everybody with that tag. Right on. So that is a great feature. Editing the tag is super good. Um, and and again, that is for admins, but if you update this tag, every single person who was labeled import gets labeled import primary. Beautiful. And I don't want to get too deep into it, but I want to mention this, and then we're going to circle back after we do custom fields. Mm -hmm. We mentioned this really already. Obviously, tags can power custom, can power uh, smart lists. So think back in your tagging strategy. Like what, what people are we trying to get into these smart lists? And what tagging structure or names or whatnot would help us do that, whether it is like the zip code thing, whether it's your top 50, whether it's the VIP client, um, you know, just thinking of them as well as powering your ability to filter or find or create smart lists uh, around people. And I don't want to go deep into this because it's a whole other webinar. In fact, we've done quite a few. Tags can also power automations. They can. So if you want to say, hey, whenever I add this tag to so-and-so, I want it to move them to the pond, move them to a pond, or send them another act, set up a new action plan or do something. Right. Bear this in mind on your tagging strategy as well. They can start automations, but uh, you know, be be wise with your choices. Right. Absolutely. I mean, um, and one quick note, I always want to say this when we're talking about triggers. You can't mass assign a tag and start an automation right now. You know, we might reconsider that in the future, but as of right now, tags would have to be assigned one at a time. Um, there are strategies for getting them to assign, to apply one at a time that take that can still not be manual. Um, that also goes to the more automation side of the, yeah. the conversation. So we'll try to avoid that right here, but there are ways to make those tags kind of hop in. Um, that you won't have to do on a regular basis so that you can still automate certain processes to a large extent without within the kind of within the structure of the, the way the automations work. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm glad you mentioned that. Sometimes I forget to mention that it will not fire in bulk. If you go in and mass add, it'll add the tag. It just won't fire right. the automation in bulk. If you add the tag to 2000 people, it's not going to do the action. So that, that definitely bears noting. Right on, <laughs> a little bit right. of caution. Cool, and I think people know tags pretty well, but again, you know, using an edit button, maybe putting a note in your calendar once a quarter or twice a year to take a look and clean them up, make sure they still make sense for you um, is definitely smart. But I think we can hop into custom fields now. I don't know okay. if we want to go client record or admin first, but pick one. Start, let's start here because we want to just, let's look at the fields that we have here. So the custom fields, do you want to introduce them, Lee, or should I go ahead? Uh, go for it. All right, cool. So custom fields live here um, on the lead profile, but we also have custom fields that apply to only deals. I'll show you those in just a second um, because you kind of put them together slightly differently. However, the custom fields here are entirely custom. Your account does come with some. So if you really haven't explored this, you'll see a few entries that kind of came with your follow boss account out of the box. <clears throat> custom fields can only be created under the team owner account. So only the team owner of your account um, can actually add or update custom fields. There are four different kinds of custom fields, open text, op uh, open number, date fields, and drop downs. Open text and open numbers 
are just that. They're free text. You can put any kind of text in a text field that you want. You can put any series of numbers in a number field. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no controls. So this would be a, you know, a great idea for like kids' names if you want to put them in a custom field or po instead of possibly a relationship because you're probably not going to be doing business with the kids. Text fields would be you know, an opportunity, op optional place for optimum place for a kid's name. Um, <clears throat> and once you've selected a custom field as a type, can't change it. So if you have entered a text field and want to record a date and you want to go back and put those dates in a date for in a date custom field instead, and the, and the reason you might want to do that is because date custom fields can also activate automations. But, um, but you can't simply um, change the, the type once it's, in, once it's embedded. But while I'm showing you this screen, Hide if empty and read only come into play with custom fields. And I want to touch this, I want to go over this really quickly first. So hide if empty is, def is checked by default. And basically what that means is, is if, the, if there's no data in the field, it stays hidden on the customer record. Um, <clears throat> and that's basically to keep your view as concise as possible. So you don't like, what's this mean? Or what's this for? And then, so that's what it's there for. <clears throat> that can help from you know, a lot of different aspects, keeping workflows cleaner and more efficient. Well, read only, if you have however, a lot. I would, yes, I, the yeah. biggest thing I would add, if you have a lot, this is useful. Sometimes it can think about this if you're deciding on hide only or not, hide if empty or not. If it's empty, is that a trigger to do something? The Y Lopo Stars Link is a perfect example. I prefer not to hide that field because you want to see if they don't have a Stars Link because you may mean you want to add them. Same yep. with something like a birthday. You birthday. may not want to hide yep. that because you may say, oh, this is my trigger to get their birthday and fill it in. Right. But for also for more specific fields that are meant for just like a single person or a team, like ISA or something like that, hiding them if empty makes sense because it doesn't gum up the overall view. And then read only. This is one of my favorite things to coach clients on, especially folks who say, I wish I could lock my tags. I wish tags weren't as versatile as they are. A custom field is the perfect option for somebody who wants to store information in a custom field and have it not deletable, not, you know, not changeable. So that that sticks permanently, perpetually, as Lee said, evergreen. So if you're creating a custom field, and let's say you wanted it to be a drop-down field. I like this a lot because if the drop-down's empty, it means you can, it can be filled, but then once it's filled, it can only be unfilled or edited by an admin. So a drop-down field with just a couple of different selections or a text field, if it's marked as read-only, that data can be entered once, and then it can only be changed by an admin. So some of the tags like, like last close date or most recent close year or something like that, like Lee mentioned, if that's something you want to make sure doesn't get deleted by mistake or that some that can't be changed without you know someone deliberately doing it, then a read-only custom field is ideal to hold that information. Absolutely. <clears throat> I've seen people use those for things like company leads, so the tag can't be removed. There's lots of really smart things you can do with those. Um, but yeah, that read only is, is a really great feature. And if I'm not mistaken, Jeremy, any admin level user can edit them. Is that correct? Not just the owner? Correct. It can be anybody, any admin level okay. user. Can an agent, an agent level user cannot, they can right. do it once. They can get it there, but then they can't change it. Exactly. If the field is empty, they can fill it, but then they won't be able to change it. Yeah, that's and that goes for anybody who might have an integration where it puts information into a custom field as well. If that custom field is marked as read only, it can't be entered. <clears throat> that was a great ad. And similarly, I guess I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but for the most part, tags and custom fields really can work in tandem. Like we said, with automations, with mm -hmm. smart lists, there, there's a lot, they do a lot of the same things, but hopefully with what we're covering, we're kind of going through the nuance of like, should this be can should this be able to be removed or edited by an agent? Do we want it to do this thing or do that thing? So we're really having a strategy to use them in tandem uh, makes the most sense. One other thing about custom fields is you it's I won't say you can't, but it's more difficult to update them in bulk. 
tags are easier to add in bulk or remove in bulk or edit in bulk. That's true. Custom fields aren't quite as flexible in bulk, right. but that's yeah. kind of the point, right? They, they, you don't need to necessarily do that. Yeah, generally it's information that's specific about this person, not a, a, just a piece of data that you need to shift. Um, depending on the type of custom field, sometimes it is possible to overwrite custom fields with an import, but uh, that's not gonna go any deeper into that. If you have questions about that, you can reach out to our support team because they can help you with that particular process. <clears throat> So I think, uh, sorry, I moved away from our notes for a quick second. Let me hop back. We mentioned, obviously, they can power smart lists. One other really cool thing about custom fields that tags don't do is they are merge codes. That's true. If you want yeah, to be absolutely. able to send an email either manually or even potentially automatically, your custom fields are merge codes. So you could say your, and we're going to get to this in a minute on deal stages, but your closing date is custom field closing date. Your lender is custom field lender. Our recommended, you know, whatever. Like it's really powerful. That these can be used as custom as merge codes, right? Uh, emails and notes, uh, anywhere you can use a merge field. Absolutely, it's another. Uh, this is one of the really great places to store specifics that you can use again in your communication over and over again, um, and uh, and yeah, work them in and consider that when you're creating custom fields. Is this something I can also use for my communication, etc.? Awesome. Do you and do that you works on text to... templates and oh, email templates. Just yeah, wanted yeah, to mention nice. merge fields available both places. <laughs> Really good stuff. Do you want to go to deal custom fields now, Jeremy? Or I'll I do. Okay, yeah, real do. quick on deal custom fields. So the custom fields we were just looking at pertain to the contact, this lead profile. The custom fields that we were just talking about pertain to this person perpetually. Now, let's say that there's information particular to a transaction that a lot of folks who've had follow-up loss for a while might be storing here in these custom fields. But now, about oh, a few months ago, we added deal custom fields. Deal custom fields, again, can be added and created by the owner login on the account. And it lives in this little gear where you can also change pipelines and so forth. But the custom fields for deals live here. The deal custom fields here are exactly the same and you create them exactly the same as regular custom fields. They can be read only, they can hide if empty, they can be four different types, et cetera. They are not currently the merge fields. Right now, deal custom fields have not been added to the merge fields in communication templates. So I wanted to touch on this really quickly right after that to let you know that. However, the deal custom fields, if it's a date type field, can still trigger automations. And that can be really important when you're using deals. If you're using deals heavily to manage a transaction workflow, those date fields can start all sorts of stuff going, task lists, you know, next steps, additional communication, et cetera. There's all sorts of great ways to use these date custom fields also to help move your transactions along. And the really cool thing is that every transaction has the exact same custom fields and you don't have to keep changing it on the, on the profile page. That's one of the reasons we put it in place. So for this deal, we can have all this information locked in, stored forever. And then the next time this person, if this was an investor who you work with or a repeat customer, you don't have to edit their contact page. And in fact, you can even remove some custom fields that you're currently using on the contact page and put that information on the deal custom fields itself. Absolutely. I love that so much. And yeah, they show up in the calendar. And for now, they're all dates are the same color, um, but they are a different color than things like tasks in the new calendar. So it is. It, and as Jeremy's showing now, you can drill down. You can uncheck them and say, hey, show me all my deal custom fields only for somebody like a trans transaction management person. Oh, we missed Dwight's birthday. We did. He wants those beats, you know, yeah. that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Should have checked that smart um, <laughs> Exactly. Um, 
No, and this is exactly, and this is an opportunity to at least show everyone the new calendar, which we rolled out last uh, two weeks ago, and you know, which is a much more functional view of actually has you know functioning day and month views now instead, and it also kind of it, it helps you drill down into what is going on with your custom date fields in Follow Up Boss. Awesome. And Alan just asked a great question that was right where I was headed next. Unfortunately, unless this has changed very recently, um, the deal custom fields are also not yet columns. So you cannot currently at this instant make a smart list um, with the deal custom fields. But uh, we are yeah we're lobbying hard for that and we know it's coming so. <laughs> and the next evolution of custom fields was originally um intended to be that they would be included in your deal reporting so that right. there could be additional you could, filters here and so forth where you could filter down so you could essentially it's not technically a smart list but you could filter alphabetically or certain dates or certain things so right. uh We'll just leave it as it's definitely coming, but it's not currently. Right. There'll be more here. tools. Yeah. There'll be more tools in the future. Uh, there are, there have to be, there always are. <laughs> right. 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 And Jill has a great question while we're on calendar and I'm actually going to look right now. Cause I don't know. Oh, um, no. Is um, calendar different on this. the app? No, it's yeah, the same. The calendar is intended to be updated on the apps to you a little bit, to make it look a little bit more consistent with what we've done here. But as of right now, the calendars on the apps should be the same. Some of the fun, but they, they were updated somewhat because there's some slightly different functionality in the calendar, the architecture right. of the calendar that needed to be put into the apps, but we're not going to be adding a lot of any, there's no current like, extra bells and whistles to the app. Yeah, the view, the view is not different on mobile, but there is some added functionality because of yeah the overall added functionality. And for those who don't know, well, number one, we have an upcoming office hours on the new calendar, um, but some big changes here. Um, most most notably, Oops. the the day, week, month views. You didn't, use, you didn't used to be able to drill down. It was just a month view only. So now you can drill down to a week view, which is probably more how you would view, uh, say a Google calendar or even a day if you're really focused on what you're doing that day. And those filters are super handy as well. Again, if you're in focus mode, I'm going to hit up people who have birthdays this month or this week. You can filter down so you only see those dates. Right on. And if you have tasks that, um, I just want to mention this, there aren't any here. If you have tasks that are not scheduled for a specific time, they appear at the top of your page as like something, and it will say how many tasks you have due that day. So it mirrors a little bit what's on your task list to give you two places to reference. Absolutely. One other quick note about the calendar I want to mention, just because I think it's um, important. You can so if you remember on your old calendar, there was an everyone choice, and the everyone choice was there because all everything you know it was kind of easy to display things for anybody who's got um, a an account that includes the Teams function, which is usually our platform accounts. But if you've got Teams that where you can create additional Teams, then the calendar eliminates the everyone feature and gives you Teams that you can search for instead. So there's ways to kind of make that, you know, kind of do what you did with everyone, but it also gives you much more concise views where you can search a little bit more precisely yeah that's really cool just for example yeah. people aren't familiar with the teams feature you can do things like have isas all in a team or if you have multiple locations they can all be in a team so it's a really cool organizational structure so being able to do that on the calendar is really handy how many appointments do my isas have how many right, right. Teams, how many appointments does texas have um yep. but yeah we won't go too deep on that here but but jeremy's your platform guy and we've got we've had prior office hours and webinars on teams if you want to dig in more Right on. Um, last couple of things we have on our um, to-do list here is to make sure that everyone knows that those date custom fields, the date custom fields can trigger automations. That is one of the triggers in the automation workflow, calendar date. And this applies only to custom fields because that's really all the only place the calendar dates can be stored. So it can be anything under your deals section. And you can see that we break the deals out at first and then standard custom fields 
are next. And so if we wanted something to trigger off of the close date, you can go back. And again, I'm not going to go fully into automations here, but this is basically looking ahead. Zero means that this is happening today and whatever the automation is would also happen today. But you can also say, okay, I want to do something in a week. I want to do it a week ahead of time to have something happen that's going to ultimately help this date me meet my deadline for this date. So that's the trigger in the automations as well. And the really cool thing is that custom fields can also be conditions in your automation. So if you have a specific data point stored in your automations, like if Lee's demo is not empty, then the automation would run. So just as they're merge fields, they're also conditions. Now, this is also not a deal custom fields yet. Because <laughs> um, the, I mean, it's it just to be techie here for a second. The same kind of filters and architecture drive these conditions as drive the filters on the lead flow screen and so forth. So we'll get, we'll have them. I know we will, just not right now. Yeah, and those are powerful. A couple of quick use cases on that obviously would be sending an automated email or action plan when seven days before their due diligence is up or five days before the uh, the financing contingency is up so a lot you can do with those um and as you showed the deal custom fields do can trigger an automation they're just not a condition so you can right. currently use them to do that hey your appraisal contingency is up in five days whether and, and again that can be a note to the agent to remind the agent to make sure it can be an email to the contact. Hey, this is coming up. Have you scheduled your inspection yet? Lots of amazing stuff you can do here. But something I know Jeremy and I are both really passionate about is the idea of having having this overall strategy of what you're trying to do. Building a couple of random automations here and there can potentially just cause confusion. Having the idea of around every key date we're going to send a reminder to the agent or to our admin or to the TC. It's going to be a lot more powerful and serve you a lot better than just, oh, cool. I'm going to make one automation for that one thing. So I just right. want to, I know you and I say that a lot, Jeremy. I, we couldn't have a session without, without one of us saying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I think it's important for any type of automation that uses an action plan to be considered to be, well, what else can I do with this? And I think that there's an, if there's an end point with an action plan or automation, then there should be something that happens and custom fields can play into that. It can be, you know, if this field is full, then this automation runs and it only goes so far. And so those conditions really play into it. Yeah. Having a strategy for all of this and, 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 you know, tags and, and custom fields can be completely used you know, willy nilly to use right. a, to coin a phrase, right? But if you can, you know, if you can kind of come up with an idea of this is what I want to put in tags and this is what I want to put in custom fields because the custom field stuff, I want to be able to use more specifically here or there, et cetera. Um, yeah, and just give yourself that opportunity. And if you have a success manager assigned to your account, then this would be a good opportunity to say, well, how can I strategize this? Reach out to them and say, can we chat a bit more about this so I can put this something a more specific strategy in play. If you don't have a, a success manager, we have lots of articles, our health library and on YouTube um, and our YouTube channel to talk about database organization. There's plenty of sessions of office hours and our bosses in action series that cover that. So there's really good stuff out there. Absolutely. And I just dropped a link to the prior, to the, all the past office hour sessions, which obviously takes you to the follow boss YouTube channel. Check the playlist there, quick tips, Bosses in action. I mean, there's so much information there as well as the Facebook community. I'll drop a link into yep. the Facebook community. I think a lot of people are in there now. Jeremy, why don't you take us out by just showing at least like back to the people screen, how we could use tags and custom fields in tandem, either on a smart list or just a filter. Just how, how can we now use these together to help yeah, people, sure. people organize? Absolutely. Okay. So we've got our stuff in place. We've got information in place. <clears throat> um, so let's just use Dan here. Let's take a look. What do we got in here? Website. We've got lender status approved. Okay. So lender status approved is important, right? They're pre-approved. They're a buyer. I want to know who in my database is not my active client who is a pre-approved buyer. Um, and so I'm going to look for 
the tag of buyer because it helps me identify the type of customer I'm working with. And then I want to use a custom field of blender approved. Let me go down. Blender status. Sorry, it was and include approved. Nice. And now I can sort by the two different categories. I have now a smart list. And I can, if I really wanted to drill in, I could say, well, I want to exclude the stage of active client because I know those people. So I can just do like, well, I can use any of my, well, that's, oh, I apologize. Those are the deal stages. That's a, there are some deal, there are some deal filters, Alan. They're just not the ones for the custom fields. So um, stage, ta-da, exclude, active client and now i know who in my database i still have an opportunity to convert if they're a nurture of you know an a b or c or a past client um who you know or a renter or anything along those lines and you can save this list and keep it as that well i need to go i'm going to fish in here you know there's got to be some opportunities in here for me to convert Right. Absolutely. And if you want to further drill down, if you're prospecting, you can obviously filter by a good phone number, has email, yep. not unsubscribed, all those things. So again, back to that, I hate to, to beat the, and we have a great question I definitely want to tackle, um, not to kind of run it into the ground, but the idea of understanding the, your options with these specific two things to really drive what you want to drill down to um, that's the key. And that was a great example, Jeremy, like lender status includes approved. They are a buyer. And, you know, in this case, obviously you would probably have their phone number if you're actively working with them. So I jumped in right. with an example, <laughs> but like, yeah, show me all my, show me. And again, as an agent, this is powerful as a team lead is super powerful to be able to see how many people do we have that are pre-approved in the active client stage. So, uh, you yeah. know, having all this data is really important. Yeah, absolutely. And I forgot to mention that custom fields are also columns. So you can filter for one thing and just display the custom field to see. So if you don't want to necessarily filter, you want to see right. everybody who's got that, everybody's information in a particular list, you can do that too. And you can sort that way. So if you wanted to yes. sort by all the people that had a lender status, you could right. say, oh, here's all my approved. Here's all my getting approved. Here's all my needs credit repair. Here's all this. It's, it's just really, really great stuff. D is right a great on. question I want to hop into. Yes. Um, said, can you use custom fields to track touches with a client and then run a report on it? So I have thoughts on that. I'm going to let you go first, Jeremy. Let's see where we line up on this one. So, I mean, the answer is yes. Um, you can. It's going to get a little ungainly after a while because the because custom fields, in order to be effective in that, situation would basically have to be edited over and over and over again. Right. Follow boss has other tools that are more concise to do that. The, um, which, but I'm going to let Lee also answer your question. Um, yeah, but... I was, I was going to say the same. I feel like if you were really concerned very specifically about only when the last touch was mm -hmm. a custom field might be great because we haven't touched these people in X days, and it depends on what the touch is, right? Is it a pop by or is it an email? Like those are vastly different. Um, unless you want to have a bunch of custom fields, yeah, I do. I do like this for this. Um, D, we have a beautiful solution for you that we're getting to. Thank you for the clarity. He just yeah. um, just added. I want to track pop buys, calls, and notes. So that is, we have a beautiful use for that. But we're going to finish this here super quick. Oh, no, I just want to mention, so if it was this last touch in general, you could certainly log a date. And then right. the next time you jump into follow boss and give them a call or what have you, you can certainly update that with the next field. But certainly you can have the additional custom fields for those specific things. If you right. want to make sure that you're pop, pop, popping by, you know, once a year or, one, or twice a year, if you want right. to. Um, for um, And so that's definitely. Like, yeah. Exactly. And then and, then, and then to that same point, you can easily dig into like who hasn't, you can add as a column, make a smart list, who hasn't had a pop by right. in the last three months. One other thing I didn't show earlier is that you can rearrange these so that they show differently from the custom field screen. So if I want to make my pop by really something that pops on my lead profile, I just 
put it at the top of the list. So it's the very first thing for me to say, I stopped by Dan's house on the 16th. Uh, my Popeye is sati satisfied for the next six months, you know, and, or year or whatever you're doing there. And then you, once it's in, that date is in there, you can also, when you're using a date filter of a custom field, then you can also look for in the next or, or was more than. And so with other dates, you can kind of find a time frame that you want to look for so that you can take next steps. Beautiful. I'm answering it. And then, but I'm question. still going to, while Lee's answering that question, I'm still going to say there's better ways to track calls and notes. Um, and frankly, if I was working with Dan, <clears throat> logging, simply logging a call here will count as communication in Follow Boss. And you can find the last communication or last call very easily with filters that are already in the that are already in the system. You don't have to create a custom field if you just log it here. And it can really be just simple. It can be like called. We uh, silly keyboard called. And if we log the call, then it keeps the date and time. So it's always going to be a reminder of when that last touch was. Notes themselves also, you know, it's better to put them up here. Notes are always kept in chronological order. You can I have seen some folks use the uh, like a note date in the custom fields to remember the last time they touched it. However, we also have a filter in the smart list called last updated. Bear with me. Updated. And this means if this, if it was less than a day ago or more than a day ago, this is the last time you touched that person, the last time you changed data or added data to that screen. So this filter in of itself will look for those notes that were recently added yep. and just display, and it'll only show people who haven't had a note in whatever time frame you want to use for that follow-up. Beautiful. So yeah. there's I'm, some filters that will work for those already. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to take us down a little bit of a detour rabbit hole, but it's really the best answer for this question. Um, Jimmy, can you hit admin appointments? This is- Oh, this sure. Is this is where one needs to do this, although it's obviously not tied to tags and custom fields. But, oh, appointments, right. But I love, I love the, the segue into this. So far and away, the best way to do what you're trying to do is in appointment types and outcomes. Because you can, you can if, as long as you're the owner or an admin, or I think just an owner on appointment types, you can put in here whatever you want. Birthday card, sent, um, Popeye, complete uh, yep. and then these are very trackable by quantity by when the last one was done um there's a right. lot yeah so d expands a little bit so she wants to be able to show her report to her coach to you know keep her process moving forward and keep you know, keep um evolving so when you create this is actually a great solution for that d because we have a very simple appointment report where you can simply filter by, let's say, if you just did last month and you want to show your coach what you did last month, creating those appointments in follow-up loss is a great way of logging this. And the way that you would do that is simply if you popped by Dan's house, you're on his follow-up loss page, whether it's here or whether it's in the app, you click the plus sign, you create the appointment and you just call it pop by. And you can also adjust the type and outcome based on what happened. And by logging this and creating the appointment, if this box is unchecked, you won't send any messaging to Dan, it's just for your reference. And if I create the appointment here, then it's going to show up in my appointment report. So you get a really good log of those important things that you're trying, those important habits that you're trying to build. And if you really want to get fancy, kind of like you did, Jeremy, <laughs> add a time to it, it'll be in right. your calendar as well. So like this, exactly. is, this is the solution to this, uh, to this question, for sure. Using appointments, right. getting good types of what you want to measure and good outcomes of what you want to measure. And then, yeah, and you can even export or print that report, I believe. So again, back yeah. to the um, coach, like, here yeah. you go. We recently, a few months ago, added the ability to export all reports. So simply pushing this button is going to give you a CSV file of the data that appears on the screen. That's There's good. another good question in the chat from Jill. Is the updated filter only for notes? So updated will updated is going to show any changes to a lead profile that is not communication. 
We have other filters for communication and it is not about like new activity, about new inquiries or new, or new stuff coming in from lead sources. It, but will show any changes. If you change, add, add a person's phone number or edit the person's phone number. If you add a note, um, if you add, change a custom field, if you create the, and so forth, it's going to provide that, that filter will show you the last time you touched that field or anybody else. If you have an, if you're an admin and you want to, if you're checking on updates and so forth, it'll also do that. Awesome. What a great crew. We have some, some great, great questions. And just about mm -hmm. everybody stayed on for a full hour for our official <laughs> scheduled 30 minutes. So really appreciate it. Isn't it amazing? Time. It's great. <laughs> it's amazing that tags and custom fields, which to, you know, and I'm glad you guys stuck around because yes, they're here. We see them, but the lots of ins and outs that I'm glad you stuck around for. Yeah, that's awesome. We appreciate you guys. I appreciate you, Jeremy. And we'll see you again and soon. And I appreciate you, Lee. We'll do, we'll do it again. I always love doing this with you, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. I hope everyone right. has a great day. Y'all take care.